used cars that you should never buy. I did this series on my channel about five or six years ago. They sort of went viral and actually helped me gain a lot of the following I have today. It's been five years since then. We're in 2023. Let's go ahead, revisit it, and update that list. There's all different types of vehicles on this list from the normal consumer car to some higher end things to some trucks, SUVs, sedans, everything. I guess with the exception of exotics. One disclaimer I would like to make before we get into the video is that the cars I mentioned here, if you own one, I'm not saying that you're going to for sure experience this problem or these problems that I talk about. These are just some of the most common failures and issues on these platforms and vehicles. So if you own one of these, you haven't had these, this problem yet. You might not, there's a good chance you might also. If you enjoy this type of content though, please subscribe, help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers. Let's get into it. First up, we have the mid 2010s Nissan Altima. This era of the Altimas are not known for being the most reliable. The CVT in them, which is the transmission, is often known to cause expensive repairs and failure. Owners have also complained of some electrical and interior problems, not to mention the Altima exudes what's known as big Altima energy. If you don't know what that is, it's a fantastic Facebook page, and a lot of Altima owners seem to embody what is big Altima energy. All jokes aside though, if you do own one, don't be shocked when you find yourself doing 105 on the freeway with a mismatched bumper and a headlight for an hour. Second on this list is the 2015 and newer Maserati Ghibli. The Ghibli has one of the worst resale values on the car market, which kind of makes it suspicious already, cars that depreciate that much in such a short period of time. I mean, many of these Ghiblis were $70,000 and up when they were new, and now they can be found for under $30,000. With the Ghibli, it really comes down to reliability or lack thereof. There's complaints of seized engines in early models. More research also uncovers issues with chassis cracking, which is obviously something very serious as well. There's also problems regarding build quality, and it's considered to be poor given the higher class of the vehicle. You'd expect some better build quality. Third is the mid-2010s Ram 1500. These trucks are very popular, but have been plagued with 16 factory recalls of all different types. These are from transmission complaints, engine problems, interior accessories, and electrical problems. And it seems like one of these, even alone, could cause a big nightmare for potential owners. Fourth car you should never buy is an early 2010s Jeep Grand Cherokee. The fourth gen Grand Cherokee is similar to the Ram 1500 of the same era. The Grand Cherokee seems to have complaints across the board, especially when it comes to electrical problems. Electrical issues, as I've kind of sadly learned from firsthand experience, can be very expensive and difficult to diagnose. And Consumer Reports also gave the Grand Cherokee a one out of five reliability rating. So that's pretty bad. Fifth on the list is the early 2010s Hyundai Sonata. Hyundai has grown into a reputable brand in recent years. However, the early 2010 Sonatas have been known for major engine problems. The 2.4 liter motor in the car was the center of a class action lawsuit that resulted from oil consumption and engine fires. Hyundai has agreed to extend the warranties on some of these cars to 10 years but obviously most of those have since expired. Number six on the list, this is a car I included the first time I did these series, but I wanna mention it again because there's still a lot of them out there. That would be the early 2000s Honda Accord. You might find it odd to see a Honda on this list. The automatic transmission in these Accords was notoriously bad, often resulting in complete failure. Thankfully, if you are looking for an Accord from this era, it was also offered with a manual. There were also a variety of other recalls on the Accord, many of which were airbag related. Seventh on the list is the mid 2010s Ford Focus. Similar to the Accord and many other vehicles on this list, this, this generation of Focus was well known for having major transmission issues with Ford's DCT, their dual clutch transmission at the time, which was a very, very costly repair. Thankfully, if you are looking for a Focus, some of their sportier models, such as the ST and the RS, which come in hatchbacks, are offered with a manual, which would obviously completely avoid that problem. However, I should add that the base model Focus should still be avoided, especially ones that have the DCT. Number eight is the mid-2010s Nissan Sentra. Once again, the Sentra is plagued with transmission issues similar to many other cars here. The CVT in the Sentra is a known weak point and it can be very expensive to fix. I know a couple people personally that own these Sentras 
three, five years ago and had transmission problems at low mileages, 30, 50,000 miles that they needed to be replaced. Owners also did complain of noisy brakes, which is kind of minor and silly, but still wanted to mention it. Number nine is the Alfa Romeo Giulia. This is actually a car that I really love, but I feel like it needs to be included on this list based off of personal experience and what I know from some other people who own them. Many of the people I know who have owned this have noted a variety of different problems they've had from small leaks or mechanical faults all the way up to complete engine failures. When I was looking at getting a car last year, I did briefly consider the Giulia. I even test drove one, absolutely loved it. However, every single, I shouldn't say every single car, majority of the cars that were on Alpha's lot that were used were all lemons and buybacks. That essentially means that they had massive problems at one point or the other and the original owner decided, I don't want this anymore. I'm selling it back to you. You need to give me my money back. That's essentially what the lemon law is in a very oversimplified manner. That brings us to the last car on this list, which I actually also included the first time I did this series five years ago or so. That would be the mid 2000s Ford Explorer. This era of Explorer has often been given the nickname Exploder. The Exploder has an extremely high number of transmission problems reported from complete failures to slipping during shifting and hard gear changes. Finding an Explorer without a cracked rear paneling may be near impossible as well. It's one of the older cars on this list, and therefore it seems that many aren't still on the road, despite having popularity back in the day. And that's obviously for good reason. So there you guys have it. There are 10 used cars you should never buy in 2023. If you have any other cars to add to this list, please leave them down below in the comments. As well as if you've owned any of these cars, let me know if you've experienced any of these problems. That's it for today. Make sure to check out my Patreon as well, which is linked in the top of the description. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.